Ellen. I'm Catherine Goshen, a professional astrologer from the village of Nyack in New York State. And I'm passionate about in-depth astrology and getting to the heart of the matter. In this video, I want to talk about Scorpio 2021. And I suggest that you listen to your rising sign first, then your sun, and then your moon in this series of videos. Also take note when I mention dates to take a day or two on either side. It depends on your time zone. And also in astrology, we usually have a buildup of energy just before an event. And then there is a waning of that energy just afterwards. And you can actually feel this in yourself during the new and the full moons. Now, Scorpio 2021 sees a huge shift for you. You had, for most of 2020, the Saturn-Pluto-Jupiter grouping in Capricorn in your third house, where you were dealing with a lot of concerns to do with siblings, communication, and now you have the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter in your fourth house. And it's going to be there for most of 2021 in the sign of Aquarius. And this sets the tone for the year. So take note of what you're doing around December 21st of 2020 when this important event takes place. And this will give you an idea of how things are most likely going to unfold for 2021 for you. You also have the planet Uranus in your seventh house of relationships. And what's going to be happening for most of 2021 is you're going to feel this energy between those two areas, the home where you have Saturn and Jupiter for most of 2021 and the, the relationships where you have Uranus who wants change. Saturn likes to keep things the same and to order things and sometimes to restrict things. It can bring us discipline and a great amount of staying power. Uranus, on the other hand, wants something new, a revolutionary way of looking at things. And for you, Scorpio, you've already been feeling this need for a revolutionary change in the way you look at relationships all the way since March of 2019, when it seems like your eyes were opened, that there is a different way to do things. And there is a different way to relate to others and to see the world in terms of relationship. With Mars as your chart ruler, Mars in its nocturnal form, there is a real intensity to your nature and you like to bring this into relationships. And all of a sudden with Uranus in this house, you're beginning to see that possibly less is more and you will have this planet visiting you until 2026 here. So there is a long time for this slow evolutionary process to occur in the house of relationships. And with Saturn in the home, it looks to me as if there are going to be tensions between duty and responsibility at home, which Saturn brings, and Uranus which wants more freedom and Uranus really wishes 
to see the truth about one's situation. So are you able to take care of your responsibilities, which may also be increasing because of Jupiter's presence in that fourth house, while at the same time embracing this revolutionary way of seeing things, a new way of relating to people, and a new way of possibly dealing with responsibility in your life. There may be some things that you need to let go of. Maybe you're not needed anymore in such a way. Maybe your children are growing up. Maybe your relationship is shifting so that your partner is less needy of you. In whatever way this manifests, the suggestion from astrology is to be more flexible in your home setup and to be more open to possibly being alone without a relationship. Maybe you're embracing that or a new way of relating to your partner that can also bring new beginnings as well as they might bring the ending of some kind of chapter in your life. So for most of January and February, you will feel a revitalization of energy because your house of relationships is going to get an extra boost from the transiting planet Mars. So things may need to be said at this time, or you might simply find yourself pushing forward with something that you tried to accomplish the whole of 2020, but could not get to. At the same time, the first three weeks of February see a Mercury retrograde period in your fourth house of the home. So things that may have come up at the end of December are going to be looked at carefully at that time. There might be some adjustments in the home. Old friends may come and stay. All in all, whatever happens, there's just one suggestion not to sign any contracts to do with the home at this time. So if you are moving home and there's a good chance that you might do this, Scorpio, the suggestion from astrology is not to sign contracts that are of a serious nature in those first few weeks in February. Then for March and most of April, you're going to have the sector of your chart energized, which is to do with joint finances. And this would be a great time to take care of taxes, to refinance your mortgage, especially if you are behind on mortgage payments due to the coronavirus. And basically to finish off any kind of agreements where your money is tied up with someone else and you want to make sure it's clear you might have some lawyers to visit and really to take care of all joint enterprises throughout that time period. It's also a good time to go deeply into therapy. If you are in therapy, it would be a good time for breakthroughs and to really honor your inner self and the intensity of your world that is going on at that time. For all of you Scorpios, bear in mind that the major months of the year will be February, June, and December when the planets Saturn and Uranus get together. And this will affect early Scorpios the most those of you that are born around October 29th to November 6th or 7th. So 
for those of you with Scorpio suns, birthdays at that time, pay particular attention to those three months. And when once you know what takes place in February, you can expect that theme to develop during those other two months of the year. On April 23rd, you will have action planet Mars moving into your ninth house, where it will be for most of May and into the early part of June. Straight after that April 23rd date, just a few days later, you have your full moon, Scorpio. And this is a time when you should see something that you've been working on for a while come to fruition. So pay attention to what unfolds or unwinds the week or two after April 26. And this is a time astrologically of fulfillment for you. So whatever you've put into motion before that full moon, expect it to bring results. What you have activated at that time as well for May and early June is the house which deals with broadening your horizons. So I see you taking a trip if this is possible due to the coronavirus. It looks like a long distance trip. And if not a trip, then a great time to broaden your mind through study. Anything metaphysical is favored at this time. And really taking care of broad communications and things which bring you joy because they are expanding your mind. For most of June, you'll also have a Mercury retrograde period in your eighth house. And this will simply give you time to finish up all those things in April to do with joint finances that you didn't get to. So this is a good time to process on a deep level and not to rush about. You are given these natural rest periods to deal with unfinished things and they're not the best times to initiate projects. So if you do have leftover stuff from April, possibly outstanding tax issues, take care of them in June as this is favored. Then for the end of June and for all of July, your area of work and career is highly energized. And it's going to be an interesting time. I would love to hear from you then. And please post comments below because astrology is living through you. So what the astrology shows is that there will the be the potential for a lot of energy expenditure at work, but at the same time, there's going to be a kind of a stop-start energy because one part of you work-wise wants to move forward and get a lot done, but once again, there's this pull from the home. Saturn can feel as if it's asking you to really fulfill commitments and feeling and living that tension is what you need to experience at this time. If there is such a thing as resolution for an opposition, astrology suggests that it comes when we place ourselves in the center and we try to find the balance between these two conflicting energies. So often the years like 2021 for you, Scorpio, where we have certain tensions that are strong are the years that we really make progress in our lives. These are the years that things happen. 
you have two major houses in your chart activated and they are going to bring you this dynamic energy to move forward with your life if you choose to. The energy and the actual action has to come from you. The planetary energies are available, but they will pass you by if you don't take action. August and the first two weeks in September are a beneficial time for you. You will hopefully be seeing rewards and money come in from work at this time, all the work you've been putting in from the beginning of the year. And it will also be an opportune time for you to connect with those groups and organizations that you've put on hold for a while, possibly due to the restrictions in 2020. Whatever the case, reconnect with your groups, have a get together, discuss things. And it's also a lovely time for hanging out with friends, inviting people over or organizing a social gathering if this is conducive to your lifestyle. From September the 10th, you'll also have Venus in your first house for a few weeks and she should bring a few small rewards. You know, Venus is known as the lesser benefic compared to Jupiter, the greater benefic. And Venus tends to shower us with small things when she travels through our first solar house or contacts our sun. So a, a good time to be kind to yourself, to spoil yourself, maybe take a day or two away if this is possible. And it's also because Venus is in Scorpio, there may be the tendency for an intensity to be around in your feelings at this time. Just keep an eye on that and try to keep it light. October looks like a wonderful time for a retreat or being able to juggle work and quiet time if this is possible for you. You'll have both Mars and a Mercury retrograde period in your 12th house, which is often a time to be behind closed doors and to really regenerate and rejuvenate. So if you are busy at this time, as many of us are, we get to keep going. Uh, make some time now, you've had good warning. Some time to, even if it's a couple of hours once a week in the evening where you have a special quiet time, you read some books, you do something that you don't normally get to in your ordinary life because the 12th house is calling for us to explore our unconscious, our deep self, which is living below the surface, just like an iceberg. Most of the time, our real self is hidden. And when we have activation in the 12th house, we are more able to receive the messages that our true self is trying to send to us, but we're so busy living our ordinary life on the surface that we don't pay attention to these voices. Then October 23rd comes around and what a wonderful time because you are born again with the light of the sun. As the sun moves into your sign, if you're a Scorpio sun or crosses your ascendant, if you're a Scorpio rising, this brings increased vitality and a sense of emerging after a few weeks in the dark. You also will have Mercury coming into your first solar house in November and Mars. So November and into early December looks charged, full of life, full of vitality. It's a great time to really 
push forward with projects, get things done. It's in your first uh, house where it's all about your self image and what you wish to put out to the world. So use this valuable time, Scorpio. You also have your new moon on November the 4th, and that will be at 12 degrees of Scorpio. And I invite you to set your intentions at this time for your next solar year ahead. Most of you will be celebrating a birthday near that time. And this is a wonderful period to concentrate your energy and to reflect on how the year has been for you so far. What changes have you managed to accomplish in your home to date? What changes have you made in your relationships? When you look back from that November new moon to January of 2021, you're going to see that there have been some real shifts that have taken place for you. And from mid-December onwards, you'll have a chance for energy to flood into your house of finances. This could be a great time for you to find ways to bring extra money in and to simply get things in order. Look back on the year. Have you met your financial goals? Have you got everything in order? There may even be the opportunity to spend some real money on yourself for the holidays because you have earned it. And that's all I have for you at this time, Scorpio. I would like to invite you to take my class on December 19th of 2020 if you are listening to this video in good time. It will be on how to see what's going on in your chart, lunations, full and new moons, current transits. And it's a really great course for beginners. So sign up for that on my website. If you can't make it live, I will put it for sale on the website. I also would invite you to like and subscribe to my channel if you found this at all helpful, it helps me to continue to make videos for you. So have a fabulous 2021 filled with prosperity, health, and abundance. Mm -hmm.